15. The Mysterious Death of Lauren Smith Fields In December 2021, 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields went on a bumble date with a 37-year-old design engineer named Matthew LaFountain. Three days later, LaFountain dialed 911 from Lauren's apartment in Bridgeport, Connecticut and reported that she was unresponsive. He followed the operator's instructions to perform chest compressions, but it was too late to save the young woman. Lauren's loved ones accused the police of botching the investigation from the very beginning by failing to collect crucial evidence from her apartment. The family also criticized law enforcement's nonchalant and unsuspicious treatment of LaFountain. According to the New York Times, Lauren's mother went to her apartment after failing to reach her by phone. There was a note attached to the door instructing anyone who was looking for Lauren to call the landlord, who put the family in touch with a detective. He broke the devastating news that Lauren had been found dead the previous day while on a date with an older man. The detective declined to offer many details surrounding the tragedy, but told Lauren's mother not to worry about LaFountain, who he described as a really nice guy. LaFountain reportedly told investigators that he visited Lauren at her apartment after chatting for three days on Bumble. They ate, drank cocktails, played games, and were watching a movie when Lauren went outside to talk to her brother. According to LaFountain, she spent 10 to 15 minutes in the bathroom upon her return and then fell asleep during the movie. He also claimed that Lauren was asleep and snoring at 3 a.m., but had become motionless, cold, and was bleeding from her nose by the time he awoke at 6.30 a.m. Lauren's cause of death was officially ruled as a fentanyl overdose mixed with alcohol and prescription medication. Her manner of death was labeled as accidental, despite her family's doubts that this was the case. Law enforcement finally launched an investigation more than a month after Lauren's death. Meanwhile, the case received little media coverage compared to many other recent suspicious deaths, including the disappearance and murder of Gabby Petito. It caused some to wonder if the situation would have been handled differently if Lauren were white. Nobody had been charged in the case, and no persons of interest or suspects have been named. Lauren's family has filed a $30 million lawsuit against the city of Bridgeport for alleged mistreatment, including telling them to stop calling for updates and for failing to conduct a thorough investigation. 14. Luke Lembrick 29-year-old Luke Lembrick was just looking for a fun time when he matched with Lisa Ann Price on Tinder in August 2019. Lembrick brought Price and her friend to his apartment in Sydney, where the three spent the night partying. At some point, he began flaunting the wads of cash that were lying around his home and lining his pockets. He hooked up with Price's friend later that night, but if he was hoping for more casual encounters in the future, he was sorely mistaken. Price and her friends were far more interested in Lembrick's money than they were in Lembrick himself. After four months of planning, three of Price's accomplices met outside Lembrick's home and moved forward with their plot to rob him blind. Joseph Nem and Valami Taufahima climbed into the apartment through a window and immediately came face to face with Lembrick. The confrontation quickly escalated into a physical struggle, and one of the suspects stabbed Lembrick in the heart. Lembrick's mother was awakened by the fight and rushed out of her bedroom to find her son collapsed and dying on the floor. The suspects punched her repeatedly and threw her into a wall several times before fleeing the scene, where Lembrick died from his injuries. Price, Taufahima, and a third suspect named Bilal Rahim were charged with Lembrick's murder. A fourth suspect, Shireen Ritzk, was accused of helping to plot the horrific crime. All five defendants pleaded not guilty and were in the middle of their trial when the proceedings were suddenly halted in early 2023. Due to an unexpected legal technicality, the judge decided it was best to scrap the first trial and hold a second trial at a later date. 2024, Taufahima was found guilty of murder. 
while Price and Rahim were convicted of reduced manslaughter charges, along with assault with intent to rob. Ritzk was acquitted of all charges and walked free, while the other three are due to be sentenced in April of 2024. 13. Jack Diamond British soccer star Jack Diamond faced potentially career-ruining allegations in early 2023, when a former fling accused him of assaulting her at his home in the English village of Fatfield. Diamond had met the woman through Tinder three years earlier. A casual and consensual relationship followed, but the woman claimed that she wasn't willing to go past cuddling on the day of the alleged incident, which happened in May of 2022. She said that she made this clear to Diamond, but that he violated her boundaries anyway. Following his arrest, Diamond adamantly maintained his innocence, claiming that he respected his date's wishes when she told him to stop. His defense team speculated that the woman had developed feelings for Diamond and falsely accused him of assault because she was upset that he didn't want a serious relationship. Taking the stand in his own defense, Diamond conceded that he was maybe naive to think that an arrangement with no strings attached would work. He would turn down the woman's request to do boyfriend-like things, like take walks together, but at the same time, he failed to realize how deep her feelings seemed to run. The famous footballer said he regretted his immaturity toward the relationship and his blindness towards how she actually felt. After deliberating for less than an hour, the jury acquitted Diamond, leaving him free to resume his career after putting it on hold for nearly a year. 12. Emogen Brook when something goes wrong during a first date, it's not unusual for both parties to tell much different versions of the story. Such was the case for a British man who accused 30-year-old Emogen Brook of pinning him down and forcing him to be intimate after they met through a dating app in 2022. After having some drinks at Brook's home in Southampton, England, the two retired to her bedroom. All the man wanted to do was go to sleep, but Brooke allegedly had something else in mind. The victim accused her of straddling him and touching him in non-consensual ways. Even after he clearly said no, unable to free himself from underneath the much bigger and stronger woman, the man said that he gave up on trying to get Brooke off of him. After unsuccessfully trying to get him in the mood for 15 minutes, Brooke gave up, rolled over, and went to sleep. Brooke was charged with causing a person to engage in intimate activity without consent. She denied the allegation, arguing in court that she was aware of her weight and would have never tried the position that she was accused of using. In her own words, she said she was too lazy to get on top of the victim. According to Brooke's version of events, she made out with the man in bed while waiting for some onion rings to finish cooking, but they never went past kissing. The kissing stopped when she went to pull the onion rings out of the oven, and the man had fallen asleep by the time she returned to the room with the food. The case was touted by the prosecution as an example that men too can fall victim to intimate violence. And while this is certainly true, the jury was unconvinced by the Crown's argument. After deliberating for just an hour, they acquitted Brooke of the charge, leaving her free to carry on with her life. At the conclusion of the trial, the judge said, I promised you an interesting trial. I hope it has been just that. 11. Khalil Wheeler Weaver Over a three-month period starting in August of 2016, a deranged serial killer murdered at least three female escorts in New Jersey. The charred remains of the first victim, 19-year-old Robin West, were found inside an abandoned house that had been set on fire in Union Township. Her body was burned beyond recognition. A few months later, a crew of workers discovered the decomposing remains of 33-year-old Joanne Brown in an abandoned house in Newark. She'd been strangled to death, and her head was wrapped in duct tape. Robin and Joanne both met their demise while working out on the street. The killer found his third victim, 20-year-old Sarah Butler, through a social app called Tagged. 
She disappeared on Thanksgiving and was found dead about a week later behind an abandoned factory. Using an app to choose his next victim would ultimately prove to be one of two major mistakes which led to the killer's identification and capture. The other was his decision to target Tiffany Taylor, who he met up with shortly before he killed Sarah Butler. She was pregnant when she met with a serial killer, who knocked her unconscious with a swift and unexpected blow to the head. Taylor regained consciousness in the middle of the assault. She was handcuffed, possibly drugged, and her head had been wrapped in duct tape. Determined to survive and protect her unborn baby, she implored her attacker to think about how their text messages would link him to her murder. Later identified as 20-year-old Khalil Wheeler Weaver, the man stopped. Taylor persuaded him to loosen her handcuffs, saying that they were hurting her wrists, and Wheeler Weaver drove her back to her hotel. Unaware that Taylor was able to slip out of her handcuffs, he accompanied her to her room. But he didn't get inside, thanks to Tiffany's quick thinking and double-jointed hand. She kicked the door open, rushed inside, and slammed it shut, activating the deadbolt before her attacker could shove his way in. Taylor called the police, but they didn't believe her story. Determined to get justice, she complained directly to the local prosecutor. In the meantime, Sarah Butler's loved ones tracked her disappearance and death to Wheeler Weaver through her activity on the Tagged app. He was arrested for his crimes, and Taylor's testimony proved crucial to securing a court victory. The jury convicted Wheeler Weaver on a long list of crimes, including murder, desecration of human remains, attempted murder, aggravated assault, aggravated arson, and kidnapping. He was sentenced to 160 years in prison, ensuring that he'll never step foot in the free world again. In 2022, Wheeler Weaver was charged with the murder of a young woman named Mawa Dumbia who was last seen alive in October 2016. Her remains were discovered in an abandoned house three years later, and it took two more years to identify the body. For now, the case appears to be ongoing. 10. Destiny Lanai Johnson The first meeting between 25-year-old Destiny Lanai Johnson and a man she connected with on Tinder went smoothly. They went for a drive in the man's car and smoked marijuana together before he dropped Destiny off at a hotel in Miami, where she was staying at the time. Nine days later, the man received a message from Johnson asking him to come to the hotel. When he arrived, the young woman got into his vehicle and allegedly told him she needed money to fix her car. He offered to give her the $60 in cash that he was carrying, but apparently it wasn't enough. According to the victim's version of events, Johnson erupted into a tirade and yelled, you guys are out to get me, before dousing the interior of the car with gasoline and lighting it on fire. Both Johnson and the victim caught fire as the blaze quickly spread. Johnson fled the scene on foot while the victim rolled on the pavement to extinguish his burning clothing. His car became wholly engulfed in flames as he looked on helplessly. Police found Johnson several hours later while responding to a report of a naked woman with burn injuries, who was allegedly telling people that she blew up a car. She was charged with attempted murder, arson, and aggravated battery causing great bodily harm. As of March 2024, she remains behind bars with her bond set at $10,000 per charge. 9. Michael Harris Jr. 20-year-old Michael Harris Jr. of DeLand, Florida, already had an alleged history of being an online predator when he was accused of killing a man he met through a dating app. According to Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood, his M.O. was to blackmail and rob men he met while posing as a gay prostitute. 63-year-old restaurant manager Bobby Scott was last seen leaving his house in Daytona Beach to meet Harris in January of 2021. The men had connected online just hours earlier and had made plans for what Scott believed would be an intimate encounter. Scott was in an open marriage at the time and texted his husband to let him know that he might meet with a man. 
it was the last time his husband ever heard from him. In their efforts to locate Scott, police tracked his vehicle through OnStar. They found Harris behind the wheel with no passengers. Harris told detectives that he'd paid Scott to let him borrow the car for a week. He claimed that he had dropped the missing man off at an unknown apartment complex in Orlando. But the vehicle's tracking data showed that it never left Volusia County on the day in question. Investigators discovered evidence of blood on the driver's side door handle, the rear hatch, and in the cargo area. Inside the car, they found shards of glass from a beer bottle and a bloody fingerprint belonging to Harris. Scott's abandoned cell phone was found in a vacant parking lot, and his body was discovered in a wooded area. Prosecutors accused Harris of bludgeoning the victim to death with a beer bottle and a 2 by 4 piece of wood after discovering that Scott didn't carry cash. Harris then decided to steal his car instead. Harris was initially charged with first-degree murder, but took a plea deal and admitted to second-degree murder in exchange for a 45-year prison sentence. During his sentencing hearing, a forensic psychologist testified that Harris had shown remorse for his actions, saying that he didn't know why he killed Scott and that he hated himself for doing it. He has a long time to reflect on his behavior while he pays his debt to society which will keep him behind bars until he's in his 60s. 8. Lauren Mary Dooley In September of 2022, a 911 dispatcher in Colorado Springs took a call from a 21-year-old man who said he was bleeding all over the bed while speaking with a woman in the background. He could also be heard saying, because you cut me and you're going to kill me. Responding officers arrived to find the man naked in the parking lot of an apartment complex. He was bleeding from an arm wound while cautiously backing away from a woman whose hands were covered in blood. When he saw the police, the man said that the woman had tied him up and stabbed him. The victim told the cops that he had just met the accused attacker, 21-year-old Lauren Mary Dooley, after matching on Tinder. He took her up on an invite to hang out at her apartment, and the meeting seemed normal at first. But the situation took a bizarre turn when Dooley allegedly duct taped the man's wrists and ankles in what he thought was a kinky game. According to the victim, things went from strange to downright scary when Dooley ordered him into her bedroom at knife point. He wanted to leave, but was terrified, so he did as he was told. The man accused Dooley of cutting his arm open and constricting his airway, first with her hands, then with a belt. She allegedly became angry when he bled onto her bed sheets. She then forced him into the bathtub and left him there while she ordered takeout. The victim said that when the food arrived, Dooley threatened to kill him if he made any noise while she answered the door. He claimed that when his captor finished eating, she forced him back into her bed and fell asleep. An opportunity to escape finally came when he got a hold of her knife and used it to cut his restraints. Dooley was arrested on suspicion of multiple felonies, including kidnapping, assault, menacing, and false imprisonment. A YouTuber who attended a preliminary hearing revealed that the judge ordered Dooley to stay off dating apps while out on bond, and that she was visibly upset about this stipulation. The accused attacker initially pleaded not guilty, but she withdrew the plea in December 2023. At the moment, the case appears to be ongoing. 7. Cody Allen Gerber 24-year-old Emily Emmy Pritch had a fulfilling career as a drama teacher in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. She was close with her family and had lots of friends, but she wasn't dating anyone, so she used Tinder to meet new people. During the fall of 2020, Emily matched with 29-year-old Cody Allen Gerber. She went to meet him at a local bar one evening in early October, unaware that she would never make it back home. The following afternoon, Gerber dialed 911 and reported that Emily's dead body was inside her car. He admitted that he'd been with her since the prior evening and that he was at the scene when emergency responders arrived. 
Emily had overdosed on fentanyl, and her body was covered in bruises, abrasions, and other injuries. Her wounds were deemed consistent with being kicked and beaten, so her death was ruled a homicide. However, it took two years for authorities to finally charge Gerber in connection with the crime. A search of Gerber's phone turned up a disturbing array of images and videos including footage of Pritch naked and seemingly unconscious while lying in the fetal position on a love seat in the suspect's basement. Another video appeared to show Pritch deceased and was accompanied by a caption stating that God had taken an angel. Gerber was charged with third-degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, and abuse of a corpse. In February of 2024, he pleaded guilty to one count of drug delivery resulting in death as part of a plea deal which saw all other charges dropped. He was sentenced to 7 to 14 years in prison, followed by two years of probation. 6. The Murder of Meek Wirt While studying abroad in the Netherlands in the fall of 2021, a 25-year-old Massachusetts woman named Meek Wirt connected with a 27-year-old man named Thomas R. on Tinder. They had a brief dalliance before Meek decided to reconcile with her ex-boyfriend. No one likes being dumped, but Thomas couldn't let go of his anger. He sent Meek harassing messages and tracked her movements using a GPS device that he secretly installed on her bicycle. In early March 2022, Thomas saw Meek dancing with her new boyfriend at a house party and became enraged. He drove home, retrieved a hammer, a large kitchen knife, and two Molotov cocktails, then returned to the party. And that's when he threw a bomb against the building and set Meek's apartment on fire. In what became known in the Netherlands as the Tinder murder, Thomas fatally stabbed Meek and seriously injured her boyfriend. He fled the scene in his car and was arrested hours later at his parents' house in Germany on suspicion of murder and attempted murder. Prosecutors accused Thomas of being an obsessed stalker who confronted Meek with the intention to kill her. The defense claimed that he was only planning on talking with Meek and that he acted spontaneously when he stabbed her. And while Thomas admittedly understood that Meek didn't want a committed relationship, their relationship felt more like a casual fling to him. This left him confused about what the situation was and where it was going. In court, the accused killer testified that he and Meek had recently gotten back in touch and that it had given him hope that they might start seeing each other again. He testified that they made plans to get together on the day of the stabbing, but Meek had canceled, claiming she was sick. Thomas went to her apartment anyway, at which point he discovered that she was spending time with her boyfriend. A court concluded that Thomas had acted with intent when he killed Meek but that he was not acting with intent when he stabbed the other victim, because he was primarily focused on Meek. He was found guilty of murder and a reduced attempted manslaughter count. Much to the disappointment of the victim's family, however, the court ruled that Thomas was somewhat less accountable for his actions due to being on the autism spectrum and having a personality disorder. In the end, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison and was also ordered to undergo treatment at a mental institution. 5. Yosef Mordecai Pariser An accused serial romance scammer spent years deceiving an unknown number of Israeli women who believed they were in an exclusive relationship with him. But he was finally busted by one of his victims in August 2023 after she noticed some red flags and decided to do some additional research. In reality, he's Yosef Mordecai Pariser, a 35-year-old married rabbi, father of two, and recently fired school teacher who grew up in Brooklyn and moved to Israel a decade ago. Under the 20 or so aliases he used on Tinder and Bumble, he posed as a guide dog trainer who worked for a nonprofit. The woman who discovered Pariser's double life knew him as Jake Siegel. He seemed perfectly normal at first, but he came up with excuses not to show the woman his apartment and was always unavailable on weekends. He claimed that he had roommates and was busy observing Shabbos, Judaism's day of rest on the seventh day of the week. 
even after months of dating and making serious future plans, the woman still hadn't been welcomed into her boyfriend's home. She tried talking to Periser about his concerning behaviors, but he always had an explanation and managed to shut the conversation down. Frustrated by the lack of answers, the woman took a deep dive into Periser's background. She visited what she thought was his apartment building and learned that he didn't live there. Not long after that, she began discovering other women he was dating, or had recently dated, under the same alias. The women got together and lured Periser to one of their homes, where they confronted him about his lies. He admitted to dating several people at once and blamed his actions on depression. It wasn't until later on that the victims discovered Periser's real identity and that he was married with kids. Another woman told Fox News that she became suspicious of Periser when nobody in the tight-knit Jewish community had ever heard of him based on the alias he was using. When she confronted Periser about this, he allegedly pretended to have a panic attack. Needless to say, they broke up. After sleeping with Periser under the false impression that he was a completely different person, many victims felt as though they'd been deprived of their ability to consent. At least two women complained to the police, and a subsequent investigation found that there are likely dozens of victims. 18 women were interviewed by law enforcement, and at least 12 more have come forward since, including a woman who claimed she dated Periser for several years. In September of 2023, authorities charged Periser in connection with his alleged crimes. He was fired from his job following his arrest. Periser has maintained his innocence through his lawyer, who described Periser's actions as immoral but not illegal. The attorney even went as far as blaming the victims, stating that every adult should know that all social media networks and especially dating apps are full of lies. He went on to say that Anyone claiming these were serious relationships lacks logic and common sense. The outcome of the case remains to be seen. 4. Evelyn Hanau Herrera Like many tourists, 27-year-old Paul Nguyen was attracted to the thriving nightlife scene in Medellin, Colombia. He traveled there with a friend in November of 2022 with plans to attend a concert, sightsee, and hit the clubs. Nguyen also made time to link up with a strikingly gorgeous woman that he connected with on Tinder. He was so wowed by her beauty that he secretly snapped a photo of her at the bar where they met and then shared it with his friends. He also messaged them about how the language barrier is unreal. It was the last time anyone heard from Wynn. When he failed to return to his Airbnb, his friend contacted his family and began searching for him. In the hours since he vanished, his credit card had been used to withdraw money from an ATM roughly five miles from his last known whereabouts. And $500 had been sent from his PayPal account to a name nobody recognized. His credit card had also been used at a store by someone who didn't match his description. Paul's lifeless body was found next to a dumpster near the ATM where his credit card was used. He died from respiratory arrest after being robbed and drugged with a sedative. It's unfortunately not uncommon for gangs to target tourists in this fashion, and in many cases, the culprits are never caught. So it came as especially welcome news when authorities announced the arrest of three suspects in April of 2023. The mysterious Tinder date, Evelyn Haneo Herrera, and 28-year-old Cesar Augusto Mendoza Lopez are facing charges of aggravated homicide, aggravated robbery, and conspiracy to commit a crime for the purpose of robbery. 25-year-old Brian Taborda Herrera is accused of participating in the robbery, but is not facing a murder charge. Given the popularity of dating apps, these types of scams remain an ever-present danger to foreign travelers in numerous countries. Tragedies like this serve as a sobering reminder to use extreme caution when meeting a new person in an unfamiliar place. And in early 2024, the U.S. Embassy in Bogota issued a warning urging Americans not to use dating apps, period, during their visit to the country. 3. Damon Allen Benson A long weekend away in July of 2021 ended in horror for one California man 
who returned to his Rockland, California apartment to find his roommate and friend of 20 years murdered in a back bedroom. Someone had broken into the residence and shot 48-year-old Cameron Gabriel seven times. Doorbell camera footage showed a shadowy figure entering the apartment in the middle of the night, followed by the immediate sound of gunfire. The killer could be seen running away from the property while shouting a profane insult directed at the victim. Investigators were initially unable to identify the shooter or his motive, but pieces of the puzzle began falling into place several weeks later when police responded to a Sacramento County home where a woman was being held against her will and tortured. The suspect, 31-year-old Damon Allen Benson, had tied the victim to the ceiling and carved a swastika into her back, knowing she was of Jewish ancestry. Benson had met the victim through Tinder several months earlier. He allegedly seemed like a great guy at first, but he became abusive shortly into the relationship. At some point, the victim started seeing Gabriel, who she also met on Tinder, while continuing her involvement with Benson. When Benson confronted the woman with his suspicion that she was seeing someone else, they had a huge blowout and stopped talking. A week later, Benson invited the victim to his apartment, where he proceeded to torture her with pliers and a stun gun. He even burned her with cigarettes until she gave up the name and address of her other lover. When confronted by investigators about his suspected involvement in Gabriel's death, Benson claimed that he had acted in self-defense. But the evidence told the story of a defenseless man who had been mercilessly ambushed and executed by a home intruder. Benson was charged with several crimes in connection with Gabriel's death and the torture of his ex-girlfriend. In September of 2023, he was found guilty of murder, aggravated mayhem, torture, felony criminal threats, and false imprisonment by violence. He was sentenced to 71 years in prison, but will become eligible for parole in 2041, which means that he could see freedom as early as his 50s. Either that, or he could end up spending the rest of his life behind bars. 2. Stephen Matthews In early 2023, a Denver, Colorado woman filed a police report accusing a 35-year-old cardiologist named Stephen Matthews of drugging and assaulting her during a date. She told investigators that she met Matthews after matching on Hinge. At some point, she blacked out, and she woke up with no memory of what happened after that. Matthews claimed that the woman became sick and fell asleep after drinking several mimosas, but prosecutors decided to pursue criminal charges for the suspected drugging and assault. He maintained his innocence through his attorney, Douglas Cohen, who told CBS News Colorado that the victim's story doesn't add up. Cohen accused law enforcement of failing to thoroughly investigate the case and omitting details that conflict with the woman's story from the arrest affidavit. Following news of Matthew's arrest, 12 more women came forward with similar allegations dating as far back as 2019. He now faces more than 50 felony charges in connection with the 13 cases, but the actual number of victims is believed to be higher. Attorney Stephen J. Berg, who's representing dozens of alleged victims in a civil lawsuit, told Law & Crime that Matthews met women in public places and engaged them in conversation to earn their trust. After establishing himself as a seemingly safe person, he allegedly used his dog as an excuse to bring his dates back to his apartment. Many women reported feeling sick and disoriented while drinking at the residence. Some lost their memory in the middle of playing Jenga and one woman claimed to vaguely recall crawling across the floor and yelling at Matthews as she tried to figure out what was happening to her. Another victim described having flashbacks of being handcuffed in the apartment with an unknown woman present, while yet another victim accused Matthews of biting her while she drifted in and out of consciousness. Most of the women recalled vomiting at some point, and some of them woke up in the middle of being assaulted. 
When confronted by the victims who didn't remember what happened, Matthews denied any wrongdoing. His attorney argued in court that there was no basis to move forward with a trial due to a lack of forensic evidence. But the judge disagreed, noting the striking similarities among the victims' narratives. And while there's admittedly a lack of scientific evidence to prove the crimes, prosecutors feel confident moving forward based on circumstantial findings, including a video of one victim who was filmed while sitting in Matthew's hot tub. In the footage, she appeared to be physically awake, but completely lost in space and unaware of her surroundings. Matthews pleaded not guilty to all charges and remains held on $5 million bond while awaiting trial. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Jose Anderson Sanchez Officer Elam Thornburg was on routine patrol in Key West, Florida on a Saturday evening in 2023, when a white Mustang sped past multiple cars in a no-passing zone and almost hit his cruiser. The driver would later be identified as a Coast Guardsman from Connecticut named Jose Anderson Sanchez. There were three passengers in the car, including a woman Sanchez had recently connected with on Tinder and two of her friends. Thornburg attempted to pull the Mustang over, but instead of cooperating, Sanchez allegedly continued to speed past traffic. At one point during the pursuit, he struck a median, causing the car to briefly go airborne. The fleeing motorist managed to regain control of his car and proceeded to blow through a stop sign narrowly avoiding a man who was walking his dog. Police then called off the chase for safety reasons. A short while later, the Mustang was found parked and seemingly abandoned in the driveway of an elderly couple's home. An officer spotted Sanchez walking down the street and detained him, while the three women were found trying to get into a lift, attempting to flee the scene. They told investigators that Sanchez had immediately started driving dangerously after he picked them up and accused him of refusing their repeated requests to be let out of the car. When the police pursuit began, the women said that they yelled at Sanchez to stop, but that he didn't listen, causing them to fear for their lives. Sanchez was charged with three counts of false imprisonment, along with one count each of reckless driving and fleeing and eluding. However, the outcome of the case is unclear. Number nine, Rashia Wilson. Starting in 2009, a Tampa woman named Rashia Wilson and several co-conspirators filed tens of thousands of fraudulent tax returns and collected at least $3.1 million in refunds over a period of three years. They filed the fake returns using other people's information without their knowledge or consent, cheating the victims out of any money that might have been owed to them. Wilson spent the ill-gotten funds in very noticeable ways. She bought a $90,000 Audi, spent around $30,000 on her child's first birthday party, and used the money to party and buy luxury items. The mother of three also bragged about the stolen money on social media by posting a photo of herself holding huge stacks of cash, along with a caption that read, I'm Rashia, the queen of IRS tax fraud. She went on to say that it would be difficult for anyone who tries to indict her because she's now a millionaire. However, she overestimated her ability to openly taunt the federal government over the stolen money without suffering consequences for it. Naturally, the case fell under investigation, and in 2012, Wilson and her boyfriend, Morris Larry, were arrested for their crimes. They both took plea deals, resulting in a 14 and a half year sentence for Larry and a 21 year sentence for Wilson. Rashia won a resentencing hearing and walked away with the same punishment she received the first time. At the moment, she's scheduled to be released in 2031. While addressing the court, she acknowledged that she made a mistake, but said that she thinks she deserves a second chance. Wilson further stated in a Tampa Bay Times interview that she grew up in abject poverty and was just a regular person trying to survive. She has some supporters who believe that her 21-year sentence is too harsh. But for the most part, the general public has been less than forgiving toward Russia, especially since her crimes weren't victimless 
and involved stealing people's identities. Number 8. Brianna Broshu. In 2017, a student that attended the University of Hartford in Connecticut tortured her roommate until she moved out of the dorm they shared together. 18-year-old Brianna Broshu was enraged when her college roommate, Chanel Rowe, allegedly posted videos of her sleeping on social media and made fun of her for snoring. In a Facebook post, Broshu described a number of disgusting things she did to Rowe's property, including spitting in her coconut oil, filling her facial cleanser with moldy clam dip, rubbing used tampons on her backpack, putting her roomie's toothbrush places where the sun don't shine, and so much more. Broshu claimed that she did these things for a month and a half until Roe finally moved out of the dorm. She wrote in the post that she was celebrating the Jamaican Barbie's departure from their shared space, raising concerns that Broshu's harassment was at least partially motivated by racism. After finding out about the post, Roe mentioned in a Facebook Live video that she was suffering from a sore throat caused by a bacterial infection. It left her wondering if Broshu's tampering had something to do with her being sick. During police questioning, Broshu admitted to licking Roe's dining ware and doing some other things, but claimed that not everything she wrote in a Facebook post was true. The University of Hartford expelled her, and she was charged with breach of peace and criminal mischief. In what many saw as a slap on the wrist, the judge approved Broshu for two years of accelerated probation, which would see the charges dropped completely as long as she complied with certain rules set forth by the court. She was ordered to perform 200 hours of community service, to stay out of legal trouble for two years, and to have zero contact with Roe. Number 7. Rasvinda Agaliu. A former officer of the law from London had her life flipped upside down in 2020 when her husband was accused of several illegal activities. 47-year-old Rasvinda Agaliu was a veteran of the London Metropolitan Police Department who seemed to have her life together in ways that were both admirable and enviable. In addition to being a cop, she boasted on social media that she was a fitness instructor and a model who had competed in beauty pageants. From the outside looking in, she seemed to be a successful successful, law-abiding person who just so happened to be beautiful. Agaliu was also happily married and lived in a luxury home in an exclusive North London neighborhood. However, things aren't always as they seem. In 2020, international law enforcement cracked a major encrypted messaging network that was popular among drug traffickers and members of organized crime. As detectives began monitoring the platform, they discovered evidence of Rasvinda's husband, Julian Agaliu, possibly being involved in criminal activity. He allegedly sent his associates message about his wife being a cop, and in at least one instance, someone asked him to try getting inside information from her. During a raid of the couple's home, Julian denied using the encrypted platform. Investigators found a large amount of cocaine in brick form, tens of thousands of dollars of cash, drug paraphernalia, a large number of cannabis plants, and what appear to be documented records of drug deals. Julian Agaliu was charged with two counts of conspiracy to distribute drugs, possession with the intent to supply, and possession of criminal property. He continues to maintain his innocence to this day and the case is ongoing. Authorities declined to charge Rasvinder in connection to the crimes, but she lost her job as a police officer shortly after the raid, and her life seems a lot less desirable now. Number 6. Premeditated Murder On New Year's Eve in 2019, 18-year-old Shailen Moran met her online boyfriend, Jack Doherty, face to face for the first time. He traveled from New York to see her in Rhode Island, and proposed to her that night at a party. The next day, Doherty went to a house in Portucket and shot 54-year-old Cheryl Smith four times when she answered the door. She later died from her injuries. Doherty took a taxi back to the hotel where he and Moran were staying, and they posted a photo together on Facebook with the caption, We some fighters and some shooters. The post caught the attention of law enforcement while they were still at the murder scene, and police arrested the couple later that evening. 
During their investigation of the case, they discovered through phone records and other evidence that Moran and Doherty had planned the murder out ahead of time. Their goal was to get revenge against Moran's ex-boyfriend, Leonard Truefield III, and the plan was for Doherty to shoot whoever answered the door at the man's home. The victim was Truefield's mother. Needless to say, the couple's engagement was short-lived. Moran was convicted of first-degree murder in 2021 and received a life sentence plus an additional 10 years. A jury found Doherty guilty in late 2022, rejecting his argument that he should be found not guilty by reason of insanity. He has yet to be sentenced, but it's likely that he won't see freedom ever again. Number 5. Home Intruders when a dog breeder from Port St. Lucie, Florida, bragged on social media about how much money he made from his business, he didn't expect to be kidnapped by home intruders. But that's what happened in June of 2022, when three men came to his house posing as customers who were interested in buying puppies. The suspects robbed the terrified victim and forced him to drive them to various places for nearly two days. While chauffeuring his captors around, the abducted breeder spotted a Marion County Sheriff's vehicle driving nearby. In hopes of getting the deputy's attention, he drove erratically in order to get pulled over. It worked, but when the deputy approached the car, the victim was afraid to say out loud that he needed help. Right as he was about to be let off with a verbal warning about his driving, he gave the officer a look of despair and motioned his hand to show that he was in danger. It was finally clear to the deputy that something was seriously wrong, and he intervened and called for backup. Inside the car, the cops found knives, guns, and a large amount of cash. Tzdikil Sellers, Ben Yavin Radcliffe, and Kasia Via Bragdon were charged with unlicensed carry of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance, providing a false name, kidnapping, assault, home invasion, false imprisonment, and witness tampering. All three suspects appeared to be from out of town. They claimed that they were only in Port St. Lucie to hang out with girls, but they got taken to jail instead. Number 4. Fontrell Baines Better known to his fans as Nuke Bizzle, 31-year-old Memphis rapper Fontrell Antonio Baines caught the attention of federal authorities when he bragged in a music video about getting rich off ill-gotten COVID relief assistance. The song was called EDD, which is a commonly used abbreviation for California's Employment Development Department. During the video, Baines and other rappers held up large amounts of envelopes from the agency and boasted about how they just file a claim while other criminals sell drugs. An investigation found evidence that Baines had fraudulently obtained as much as $1.2 million in unemployment benefits in California, where he was living at the time he allegedly carried out the scam. Baines was accused of applying for unemployment using various identities and addresses that he was connected to, and obtaining nearly a hundred pre-loaded debit cards containing funds that were meant for people who were struggling during the pandemic. Investigators claimed that he and several co-conspirators used the cards to withdraw $704,000 in cash from ATMs and treated themselves to lavish purchases. The feds arrested Baines in Las Vegas in late 2020. In 2022, he reached a deal with prosecutors and pleaded guilty to one count of mail fraud and for being a convicted felon in possession of a weapon and ammunition. He now faces more than 20 years behind bars, but his case is still ongoing. Number 3. Amber Rose Barnes In 2022, Amber Rose Barnes, a social media user from Montana, posted a photo of herself posing with a dead animal, along with a caption about how she smoked a wolf pup during a solo predator hunt. People immediately noticed that the creature was actually a domestic husky dog and were quick to blast her in the comments. Authorities soon confirmed that the animal was, in fact, a dog and not a wolf. It's not unheard of, but it's exceedingly rare for a wolf hunter to mistakenly shoot a dog in Montana, according to Greg Lemon, who works for the state's Fish, Wildlife and Parks Agency. He explained in a national public radio interview that most hunters realize they're tracking the wrong animal before they would have pulled the trigger. 
The dog barn shot was one of at least a dozen domestic canines who were abandoned in the Flathead National Forest shortly before the incident. The most recent update explained law enforcement was still investigating to find out who deserted the dogs. Barnes was charged with misdemeanor animal cruelty and was ordered to appear in court at a later date. She admitted to mistaking the pup as a wolf, but spoke out against the widespread outrage resulting from the mix-up, claiming that she shot the animal in self-defense. In a social media post, she wrote that the dog was growling, howling, and coming at her like it wanted to take a bite out of her, and said that she would have shot it even if she'd known it was a husky due to its aggressive behavior. It's safe to assume that she'll pay a bigger price in the form of online ridicule than any punishment she received from the court. Number 2. Aubrey Cottle A Canadian man named Aubrey Cottle gained a TikTok following of over 40,000 fans in 2021 with his videos promoting and discussing the hacktivist collective Anonymous that were openly against the war in Ukraine. However, this wasn't the first time he gained online attention. More than a decade before he appeared on TikTok, Cottle helped draw widespread attention to Anonymous, which is receiving renewed interest amid the ongoing war. In his videos under the username at Curtainer, Cottle bragged about his own hacking activities. The self-described famous cyber terrorist took credit for several major breaches and information leaks, including the hacking of the Christian crowdfunding site Give, Send, Go. And while some doubt Cottle's claims of being a high-level hacker, it was likely no surprise to his followers when he posted a video in 2022 saying that Canadian authorities had raided his Toronto apartment. He told his fans that the Ontario police informed him the FBI was involved. CyberScoop reached out to American and Canadian law enforcement, but neither would comment or confirm whether there was an ongoing investigation into Cottle. A few days after the raid, he was evicted from his apartment for unrelated reasons. This left him broke, homeless, and without his computer equipment, which had been seized. Cottle told his followers that he was living out of his car. He hasn't posted any new TikTok videos in several months, leaving his current legal and living situations a mystery. Number 1. Kayla Irizarry 19-year-old Kayla Irizarry was riding as a passenger in her friend's car when police pulled the vehicle over in Moses Lake, Washington in 2018. Officers had no reason to detain her, so they allowed her to leave the scene. During a subsequent search of the car, they found the young woman's purse with heroin, a handgun, and paperwork from her most recent release from jail. As a convicted felon, Irizarry wasn't allowed to have a firearm. The police department asked for the public's help locating her so they could take her into custody on drug and gun-related charges. In a snarky comment on the post, Irizarry wrote, Here's a hint of where I'm at, not in jail. Law enforcement got the last laugh when they used covert investigative techniques to lure the suspect into a face-to-face -face meeting. She wasn't expecting to encounter the cops, and when she realized she'd been fooled, she tried to run. According to an update the department posted on Facebook, Irizarry only made it about four steps before officers took her into custody. At the moment, the outcome of the case is unclear. Would you rather swear off dating apps and be forced to meet people the old-fashioned way, or deactivate your Facebook account and stay in touch with your friends through other means? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.